What is up, everybody? We are in Illusion Connect. <laughs> this is a game that I have been sampling for the past couple of days. And, man, I had mixed feelings about this game when I first started playing it. Because there's been others like it. I believe Brown Dust was the name of a similar uh, game to this. Um, but this one's a little bit different. I actually do have to say, to me, this is like an aggressive PvP Tetris match. <laughs> where you're putting your units down on a on a grid and based on where you put those units down they're either more effective or less effective uh, so I gotta say it's not my favorite type of gameplay but this game has something special about it because I just can't put it down I just can't I just keep going to the next fight uh, they're, they're quick little skirmishes um, I'll be honest with you guys I did skip through a lot of the story um, because I just wanted to get to the real meat and potatoes of this. Uh, but I have discovered along the way, this game does a wonderful job of giving you a plethora of resources. I feel like I'm always getting rewards for this, rewards for that. There's tons of stuff to claim. Um, I have almost 5,000 of the Lapis, which is enough to do, I believe, like two of the multi pulls here. Um, and I have plenty of the SSR characters. We'll look at that in a second. Here's a quick uh, list of some of my partners here. Uh, all of these SSR characters are, well, they're some of the best characters in the game, apparently. Um, so this is what I have. I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight of the SSR characters already. Um, what did I put into this game? Let's see. I Just to support the game, because I did find myself playing it, I bought an $8 bundle, and I bought a $15 bundle. So $23 into this game. I have plenty of these characters. Uh, and so far, it's, it's, an, it's a wonderful experience. I feel like any of these game companies that have made a game like this, like Brown Dust, and then there was another one, I think this game's got it right, definitely. I think this is uh, the closest to a satisfactory experience that I have managed to get out of a game that is set up like this. So let's go ahead and challenge this. Uh-oh. There's a battle mode. Oh, yeah, that's right. And you can raid, so uh, it'll automatically run it for you, which is pretty cool. So the fight starts, I'm going to want to put down a hero that has some sort of AoE. This girl does that and she also kind of breaks everybody. That girl's going to retaliate and do a ton of single target damage, but I have a girl here that does good single target damage as well. Here she goes, this is the girl you start with. Uh, she does turn into a full SSR character, I believe. This girl attacks everybody in a line. So uh, it's good to have her because she can hit multiple people at a time. But that's pretty much how combat works. Now, I did make it look pretty easy because this, this fight was easy. Uh, but let's not kid anybody. If you just stand around for a minute, uh, you will get utterly destroyed in this. Let's see. And I do believe uh, there are weapons. There are gear. So... Uh, this thing looks pretty gnarly. I'm going to have to try to get this Holy Spear. I'll get into that later. Um, but let's actually go. Oh, that's right. I might have to... Oh, that's what I have to do. Uh, I have to defeat this on difficult. Oh, here. There's more stuff to claim. There's stuff to claim everywhere. So let's go from normal. Collapse, normal. Collapse. Okay, that's just showing me. Okay. Alright, well, this one's 0 out of 18. Uh, this is the carnival. So, I guess the, this is just from my loose understanding of it. Like, there's dreams and nightmares, and they're, they're kind of fighting each other or something. Uh, regardless, the character design is great. I was really drawn to that. They look good. I'm going to go ahead and just skip this. I get my my 20 lapis and then we can get right to the fight 
This looks like the lady of the evening that I will be fighting. She is voluptuous to say the least. So let's see what this girl's working with. Alright, so I gotta act quick. I'm gonna pull out my girl that hits everybody in a line because ultimately you want to kill their leader, which is this girl in the back. Let's pull this girl out here. She's a new character. She's only level 15, but she managed to do the damn thing. Oh, that's cool. I like that. So she can attack. Uh, I did read that she has a chance of doing multiple attacks instead of just one, and she does really good single target damage. Uh, so that was cool. I got to actually see that. And see, it's kind of like fast pace. Like, you just go from map to map. Now, you can get into all the story, but I'm just trying to get through. Like, let me give you guys worst case scenario. Say I pull this girl out. She does single target damage. The problem is this guy is shielded. So I could very easily lose this fight just because I put the wrong character out. I'll pull this girl out back here just to try to, like, redeem myself a little bit. At least her attack is reaching the character in the back who I'm actually trying to fight. And I can put this girl out. She's going to hit everybody and curse them and break their stats. Uh-oh, looks like I'm fighting the same girl. She is a boss. Let me put out my new character. I'll put her in a box up here. Now oh, they're doing a lot of AoE. They also have a shield character up that just got taken out. Wow, that girl is going to town, man. She just took out uh, two of the enemies. That was pretty cool. And then let's see, let's put this girl out. There's my uh, tank. Uh, she does put a shield up around her and uh, the people around her so they can, so she can dampen the damage that they're taking. So all these different characters have different roles and it makes it interesting because uh, they play differently uh, depending on which characters are around them to give them support abilities. Other characters break everybody. Some characters hit everybody in a line. Some characters just have a full-blown <clears throat> AoE that hits everybody. Um, and other characters only hit people in one box at a time. But they tend to do a lot more da single target damage uh, to that one character that they're hitting. So there's breakers, there's buffers, uh, and it's pretty fast paced. I, I dig it, I enjoy it. I just got this girl yesterday. She's apparently really cool. She gets some kind of awesome thing when she dies. Um, I think I do have to start her up. And we'll throw in my AoE girl. That can hit everybody in a line. So ultimately, I'm just trying to beat this character in the very back. Oh wow, she just pulled a number on my character. I guess she gets to retaliate since she just came back to life. If she dies, I want to put uh, I want to put my tank up there. Oh, it looks like my AOE character managed to finish the girl off in the back. So she is my MVP. So these are the two last characters that I got. This little Halloween girl. Um, so let's actually kind of take a look. Oh, wait, why is there an exclamation point? Oh, I didn't get one of my rewards. Yes, I will take the 25 Lapis. So this is the girl that I pulled yesterday. And look at that. We ran a couple missions, so of course we have quests cleared and more Lapis given to us left and right. Uh, it's one thing I like about this game. As soon as you log in, there's little exclamation points everywhere. There are rewards to claim everywhere. We're doing this eight-day login. Uh, this thing right here, I'm only two SSRs away from getting ten uh, pull tickets, which is very nice. I don't see a lot of other games uh, being as generous with, uh, with Lapis and stuff as I am this game. Uh, there's There was even, where is it? Uh, there was a survey you could take and you could get a couple hundred lapis for it. You could actually do it twice. So now it's too soon to see exactly how generous this game is, right? It's, it's definitely a step in the right direction. But for all we know, a month or two from now, the resources in this game could completely dry up and you could just be begging and crawling if you're a free-to-play player. Uh, sometimes these games do that right when the game launches they'll flood you with a bunch of diamonds and stuff so you can do pulls um, Honestly though this one does look pretty good 
and the way that it's set up and all the menus with all the different prizes you can kind of see that you're going to be getting these prizes and unlocking things for a long time to come uh here's what one of their events looks like okay uh it's, it's pretty gnarly they they did spend some quality time uh you know making these events you can tell the art's great and if you click around you can find stuff um i found stuff a few times just by clicking around so here's a hollow halloween thing here's a nightmare exchange uh, we're going to exchange our candy and it looks like they gave me some candy right there for whatever I just did so I have 493 candy it's or candy points whatever they are it's not that much um, what is this random pair of SSR boots I'm gonna have to look into that but there's plenty of stuff candy imp there's a limited prize here there's a candy imp it costs almost 2,000 of these uh, the point is there's good stuff here for me to get and to grind out this guy looks pretty cool he's apparently Dracula um, I haven't seen him on a banner yet so we have summons over here this is the girl that I just pulled uh, it's a 3% but I did pull her on my first 10 pull here uh, I pulled this other girl yesterday so these are like this does say limited time uh, I believe this other one's limited time as well so there are like some limited banners uh, I don't know if that means that just the banners limited or the characters are limited um, I have this mummy girl as well and I actually pulled both of these characters Miyuki and Kiraya Kiraya so all in all, you know, not too bad. I, I I think I've had pretty good luck because they are like three and four percent, um, you know, and I still have plenty of lapis left. So that's kind of what summons look like. Uh, these events have different quests, obviously. Um, and just look, there, there's just all sorts of stuff to unlock and all sorts of things to get for free. It's no wonder why I'm sitting on five thousand lapis on a brand new account and already have a ton of the different characters. Uh, we went to the nightmare exchange we went to that uh, and here's another room that actually has a bunch of the different uh, like the challenge maps um, I'll show you guys one where I've completely gotten my ass destroyed I have tried to fight this map it didn't go well for me that's all I can remember um, Let's put this girl out because she can hit people in a row. Ouch. I'm going to put this girl out to try to finish this guy off up here. Please take him out. Thank you. This girl down here. Yeah, I remember now. I need to do something about... This girl is like a healer. Oh, that girl just took my girl out no problem. Yeah, uh, these are strong. These are very strong. They just cleared all of my characters. Uh, they healed their hero back up to full. And my party is just not strong enough to take to, to deal with this map. It doesn't really matter right now. I'm not going to be able to, to beat this no matter what order I put my heroes out in. Um, but I will say this. I've lost fights just because I put the wrong hero into the wrong box uh, at the beginning of the fight and something that simple can change the whole outcome of the fight um, and unfortunately I think I'm a little too outpowered in this case um, you can run like a rush team where you know on turn one you just bring somebody out that can clear the first two boxes and kind of open up the enemy hero and then you can just try to take them out in one shot. So there's different strategies and stuff like that that you can work with. I'm going to have to come back to this level. I am going to beat it. I just need to actually level up my units. Um, and actually, let's kind of take a look at... Let's take a look at my units. Uh, first of all, 
first of all, you do get like a house to, to build. Um, it's where all of your little, your little summons kind of live at and hang out. Where is that thing? I thought it was over here. Are we loading the house? Here it is. Right, so you have this house. Here's all the little waifus that I've pulled. They're all walking around. You can build stuff. Uh, you can level things up, which unlock different things. They give you more resources and different materials. All of these can be like leveled up. Um, I have to level this thing up soon to level three, but it, re it requires a player level of 20, and I'm not quite there yet. But the point is, there's all sorts of stuff you can do here. It's cool. You can interact with them. And you can actually drag them around and tell them to do stuff, um, which is cool. I'm sure you can unlock different things here by, by doing different things. I haven't looked into it too much. That girl's a wonderful breaker. So here's my little Halloween girl. Look, I drag her to the bed. She goes to bed. So uh, you can decorate all this. You can upgrade stuff. They've actually thought this out very well. Um, you put them in different rooms. They all have a little heart monitor. You can get them to fall in love with you or just to uh, Your intimacy increases Right So depending on where you put these characters, they'll have more intimacy with you also in the story uh, It asks you to answer questions uh, to jump to conclusions and if you jump to the right conclusion you will earn some intimacy points with the characters that you're talking to and dealing with uh, and those actually can help you out. Here's all of the different, you know, heroes that you can get. And if you click on one of them, uh, they have intimacy. As their intimacy goes up, they get attribute boost, hit points, 80, defense, 3. These things go a long way. And all of these, um, every character that you pull, if you click on that little tab... You can get gems just for, you know, reading up on their little story. You can give them gifts in order to increase their intimacy with you so they can get to these thresholds. So uh, you do need to do that to really power up the characters that you want to use. But let's actually look at our little partners here. Um, let's explore this new girl together. Where is she? I haven't really had a chance to look at her. By the way, here's one of my favorite looking characters. There she is. Look at this nun, man. Look at that. This girl looks like if she fell into the ocean, she would never drown. Like, this girl has life preservers built in. And the funny thing is, uh, if you poke some of these girls, they're like, don't touch me, <laughs> you know, or don't touch me there. Uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, the Sword Master game that I'm playing with kind of does the same thing. There will be a girl in the background, and if you touch the wrong part of the screen, she's like, hey, you can't touch me there. Uh, one time I actually got a prize for it. So let's see, where is this new girl that I got? It's not Miyuki. Uh, this is one of the characters you start out with. I think she's really cool. She's got these little horns coming out of her head. Uh, I've upgraded her to an SR character. I I'm fairly certain she goes all the way to an SSR character. What's good about her is that she only takes 10 of these little crystals. That's how much it costs to bring her into the battle. So you can pull this girl out real quick. She's also the highest level character I have because I managed to wake her a little bit. Um, here's the girl I got yesterday. Now I want to see the little samurai girl. Here she is, Maki. Um, here's Maki. And you can actually just kind of read what what uh, what they do. Her combat passive is when Maki dies, 220% attack damage is dealt to enemy leader. And that's cool because the leader is the one that you want to kill to end the fight. Right. Um, what else does she do? Activation requirements. Average lineup energy is less than or equal to 14 activation effects when an ally partner dies she deals a hundred percent attack damage to enemy leader so that's pretty cool um this girl is going to be doing damage to the enemy leader even if she can't reach him 
even if there's two tanks in front of him if your enemy's team takes out one of your enemies this girl automatically gets to do some damage to the enemy leader and when she dies she gets to do some damage to the enemy leader but then these characters also have skills like this girl has crimson moon uh a true slash with a legendary blade maki attacks a single enemy dealing you know attack 400 percent damage and has an 80 slash 25 percent chance to trigger a one hit or a two hit combo dealing 135 percent or 100 percent damage that's pretty wicked i noticed that instantly um this girl went and attacked somebody and i guess this procced and she got to do a second attack on somebody else and she ended up killing two mobs she ended up getting two birds stoned at once which is awesome so that's just her unique she has a special is uh wind slash uh, an overhead strike that's powerful enough to cut through steel. Maki attacks a single enemy and deals attack 162% damage. Uh, chance of use skill 15%. Still haven't figured out exactly what that means. And here's her normal attack, right? So when you put this character out, they're going to try to use their special. Um, and then after that, you know, after a couple seconds later, they start doing their normal attacks, which still can be very effective. So this girl's normal attack is slash dance. Maki goes into a dance with her blades, attacks a single enemy, and deals attack 105% damage, right? Now, this girl is only at 3 star. Obviously, if I go into this lens area, I can star her up. She's going to get more attack. She's going to get more defense. She's going to get everything. And as you star them up, um, because she's an SSR character... When you star one of them up, it lets you get shards for another SSR character. So as you are leveling up and powering up your heroes, they're giving you materials for other rare heroes to power up. Um, also, attribute percentage, increase basic attack and hit points by 10%. Hey, that's awesome. Um, so every time you lens her up, which is another way of saying star her up, uh... If you get her to 5, she gets a 15% to her attack. Uh, increased basic attack by 20% from attribute boost. Uh, yeah, pretty much all of their abilities increase. Their potency of their abilities. They don't just get higher stats. They actually end up being able to do more and more stuff. So it, it becomes very interesting. Um, again, I can't level this girl up anymore though. Uh, because I need shards of her. What are these? Oh, I just need soldier badges. So I'm going to try to grind out a few more of these because I'm at 4 out of 6. Uh, and then I could maybe get her to level 30 so she could hang with some of my other heroes. And then I could probably clear that damn Halloween level. Uh, so this is pretty much how the characters work, right? Um, and all in all, I've had great luck pulling all of these characters. Here's... Here's Diamond. I just like looking at her. She is a peacock and fool. The road to greatness. So this girl is more like a healer. Uh, Diamond's heal rate in battle increased by 15% when she appears. All allies, all ally partners with the lowest hit points is returned to your hand and receives 80% attack and 55% hit points max. So when she returns somebody to your hand, that means you can resummon them and they're going to they're going to you know come back out on the on the battlefield and they're going to have a boost to their attack and they're going to have some of their health returned to them. So this girl's pretty cool when you're in a tough spot. There's plenty of healers. It's not like she's the only one. Um, you can see uh, on on the little picture of her right here in the menu at the very bottom left corner of her uh, little image there it shows a heart with a little plus sign it means she's a healer uh, Celine the girl next to her right here she has a shield so she's a tank Maki is a damage dealer she has that red red sword um, and most of these damage dealers they're kind of like single target damage dealers uh, then you have characters that summon they can summon like a little army of ghosts or dolls and those things just take up room in your grid box and they can be used to shield your hero from taking fatal damage. 
Um, and then there are characters that buff and do a bunch of AoEs. Anna here, <clears throat> Anna summons dolls. That's what her little symbol means. So when you put Anna down, a doll appears to the right and to the left of her, which makes it harder for enemy attacks to break through to get to your actual heroes. They have to kill those dolls first. Uh, this guy, Bontenmaru, uh, he is a tank. I know he has two swords, but he is technically a class tank. Uh, we have this girl. So the point is, there is tons. Like, this girl right here, she... I believe she does AoE, like, splash damage type deal. She will hit multiple boxes at once. Uh, what do these girls do? Um, I don't know if they're breakers. Let's see, what does this girl do? Uh, every light, healing, and guardian class. Enemy on the, on the enemy side increases her attack by 12. Okay, so she kind of feeds off of other people's misery. Uh, what's her unique... Pray to the Chains of Judgment. Has a 30% chance to stun the target. Yeah, so these are like breakers. Uh, I think they serve as like a break mechanic. Let's look at Tiffany. What's Tiffany's little... Tiffany's damage to summon increases by 45. What's her unique? A brilliant light from the stars cleanse the void. Tiffany attacks an enemy row. So yeah, she's going to attack multiple boxes at the same time and do good damage. I can lens this girl up because I have enough of her shards somehow. Um, yeah, that's not going to cut into anybody else, so I might as well. It's not like I'm using materials that I could be using on other characters. So why not? And let's pick... Uh, So we get to pick some shards for a hero. Um, actually, I've been working on this girl as a healer, as a as a side piece healer, a backup. So we might as well pick up some shards for her. Um, and that's what you can do when you star up a character. Uh, and then, yeah. Let's see, what does this girl do? Is she the one that summons dolls? Uh... Okay, Flora splits into two units on her death. Puppet Nano receives 55% attack, defense. So she's like a puppet master. She obviously has this puppet holding her. When she dies, she splits into two characters, uh, and they get different buffs. So it just sounds like that just kind of becomes a really good meat shield situation. Um, and if your enemy has an attacker that does really good single target damage, uh, it's not going to matter because... They're going to have to fight their way through the multiple dolls you have before they can actually get to your summoner hero and kill him. And that's really what ends a fight for you. So, you know, these doll mechanics that pretty much make cannon fodder, they can be very useful, definitely. I'm not going to knock them. Uh, and I think we've pretty much, pretty much covered all of them. What about this girl? What is she, a healer? Alice. What does Alice do? When Alice dies, she increases the attack of one partner on the battlefield and one partner in hand by 22% and their defense by 11%. Um, what's her unique? Alice attacks single enemy, dealing 365%. Increase the damage rate of multiple partners by 20 So this girl is a buffer. This girl is going to increase the amount of damage all of your units do around her. So that's kind of, I think, what her symbol means. That means buffer. Um, and where's little zombie girl? Because she is definitely a breaker. Here's some of the characters I haven't gotten. You know, I wouldn't mind Edward because he's supposed to be Dracula. And I think he has a really cool skin. Um, he is an attacker. And this girl's pretty gnarly. She's like a goddess of war or something. I think she summons stuff too. Uh, let's see. What did I want to look at? One of the characters that I had. Anyway, you guys kind of get the idea. Um, oh, here we go. Here we go. See, this girl, she has that same symbol. Uh, when this girl dies, she revives and receives 100% attack. 110% attack, 100 defense, 50 hit points, 
50% hit points, and 500 rage triggers one time per battle. I got to look up and see exactly what rage is and how it works, but I, it's probably useful stuff. Um, deploys at least five light of healing class partners. Activation reward when she appears. She grants invincible status to three random units for at least 20 seconds. So yeah, she's like super buffing. Um, I thought she was a breaker too though. Let's see. She unleashes the power of the ancient kingdom from her scroll that she keeps in her chest. And she does. She literally is wearing two scrolls as a bra. Attacking the enemy and dealing attack 210% damage. Reducing the target's defense by 25% for 10 seconds. So it is kind of like she is a breaker. Slash a little. It seems like she can, she can give some buffs. But really... Her unique in her uh, is that she breaks everybody's defense by 25%. That's a big deal because if you got a break on you like that, it might only take one hit to kill you, and that can win you a fight if you can just take the enemy general out before he can drop a bunch of units in front of him, uh, a bunch of tanky units. So being able to get that, that one debuff might just be crucial in actually winning the fight. Uh, and that's what I like about this game. There is strategy there. Um, yeah, there is definitely strategy there. It's not just about where you are placing your units. It's how quickly you're doing it. And it's about how quickly you are reacting to all this stuff. Um, I did see some things about items. Oh, there's skins. We have different skins for heroes. That's awesome. Um, Rebirth, those are her skills. So I did see something about like some equipment. I don't know if that's just for your leader, so your leader can be upgraded. I don't think I'm high enough on this level to actually look at my leader. Yeah, I have to clear some more stuff before I can actually look at my leader. You know, that kind of controls all these little summon uh, characters. So, I just wanted to give you guys an update of what I was doing in this game. Um, and if this looks like something that's cool to you, go ahead and check it out because it really did surprise me. The art is phenomenal. The little combat system they got going. I feel like this is the first game to get it right. Like, I know Brown Dust had some fans because it was... Uh, a pretty hardcore, you know, strat game, and a lot of people that got into the system and actually taught themselves how to play it and really understood it, um, it does become a very interesting game. I just, you know, the art wasn't there for me. It was doom and gloom enough. It looked cool and it looked pretty wicked, but I feel like this game really has it down. The characters look great. Their animations are great. You feel like they're actually really doing something for you out there. And hey guys, I'm still learning how to play this myself. This is really like my third day logging in. Um, but I find myself logging in here more and more and more and spending more and more time in here. So I wanted to give this game some of the justice that it deserves. Uh, if I missed anything, I'm not claiming to be a pro at this at all. I just wanted to put this out there so that maybe some more people can hop over here. And guys, honestly, if I didn't feel like I was going to be in here and messing around with this game... Um, I gave this game money. It might have only been $23, but that is my way of showing support to a gotcha game. It lets the studio know that they're doing something right. Um, you know, I, the way I feel about it is if I support games that I like, uh, I will continue to have games being made that I approve of because I supported them, right? I mean, this is the only way that I can really tell one of these game producers if they're doing a good job or not is by throwing them 20 bucks i gotta say my 20 bucks went a long way too because i have like eight of the ssr characters already and i still have 5,000 lapis and i'm just scratching the surface of the game so like i said we'll have to see uh, how that unfolds but so far i do gotta say it's like they really wanted to hit the ground running here they know that the market is getting saturated with different gotcha games and stuff like that I gotta, I gotta give this this game props. They're doing the right thing. They are giving away currency. They're making it easy to obtain characters. Genshin Impact. Please take a page from from this studio. Now, now I realize that Genshin, 
you know one of those characters might take a lot longer to create but like if i compare this to romancing saga where you're getting reskinned characters with like a different ability and they drop them every day all of these characters look completely different they're all custom they all have their own abilities uh there's a lot of different ways to unlock them and level them up um yeah, I, I have a feeling that this game right here, it would have replaced uh, Romancing Saga for me anyway, just because you're actually getting so much more game out of it, and instead of just getting reskinned 2D characters, let's not kid anybody here either, the art here looks amazing, the characters look absolutely great, so it was only a matter of time before I actually found one of these grid-based uh you know, brown dust-ish games that actually kind of tickles my fancy a little bit, and this game most definitely does. The art's there, it looks beautiful, and I'll be honest with you guys, uh, I rushed through the story and everything uh, just to kind of get a review in on this and try to figure out how I feel about it. Uh, maybe in one of the later vids, when I actually go through and, you know, kind of go over the story and everything... Uh, I can have a better opinion of how it is, but when I started playing this, I just wanted to rush through everything, do some pulls, and actually see how the combat uh, is, and it's grown on me. It really has grown on me. So, Illusion Connect, definitely, definitely an A-plus in my book. Uh, I'm not the first one to review this game by any means, but I wanted to weigh in on it. Guys, check this out, especially if one of your other gotcha games isn't doing you justice. Check this bad boy out. It's amusing to say the least. It's quirky, it's fun, and it's very fast-paced. You can just go from fight to fight to fight, and honestly, I have a hard time putting this game down. You know, even when it's, tar it's time for me to, to load up Last Claudia and get in there and burn some orbs, sometimes I'm like, okay, just one more, just one more. So, I don't know, maybe it's because this is like an aggressive form of Tetris and I am a Russian man, but, <laughs> but uh, this is definitely the form of Tetris that I would prefer to play. So, uh, expecting great things from this game, and I wanted to share this all with you, Uh Get in there and roll an account and get like these free characters and all this stuff that they're giving away. Even if you don't have time to play it right now because maybe you'll want to get on later. And at least then you'll have all these starting rewards and you'll have some of the characters to mess around with. This is definitely one of those games where I would suggest whether or not you know you're going to be a dedicated player to this game or not. Take the five minutes to install it, open it, and claim all your free shit. And then you can always go back to it. When you have a minute or when you're bored and you can actually start playing it and already have some of the good characters and some of the, you know, the, the good starting stuff because this game did just launch. So that's my official word on it. Take full advantage of it and then sample this bad boy out because I'm telling you, it's worth it. So Mobile Gamers Unite, you guys have an awesome day. I'll talk at you sooner than later.